Hey folks, it's Greg Roman from Voodoo Gunworks. Uh, we just want to come to you today with a little cleaning video. We get a lot of questions on uh, rifle cleaning at the shop. So today I'm going to show you uh, what I do to maintain my rifle and more specifically how to get rid of that pesky carbon ring in your chamber you always hear us talking about. So let's get to it. Uh, right here is my uh, brand new Voodoo 360. Uh, we just competed together in the Heat Stroke Open up here at Hobble Creek yesterday. And so she's pretty dirty. She's got uh, about 500 rounds through the last cleaning um, in her. So uh, let's get to work. So very first thing we always want to do is safety check our rifle to make sure we're uh, working on an empty gun. So drop your mag if you have one in there. I'm gonna open the bolt, I'm gonna take a peek in the chamber, and we know my rifle's empty. Very next thing I'm gonna do is pull my bolt out, and I'm gonna set this aside. We're gonna to get to this in just a minute. So, the first thing we wanna do is we need to get a little bit of uh, cleaner into the chamber. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is get my cheek piece out of the way, and I'm just gonna drop this all the way down. All right, for this, Okay, so we're gonna take our, our bore mop here. This is on my, my uh, short rod. This is a Sinclair um, action cleaning rod. It's kind of like a pistol rod, but it doesn't have a bearing or, or a, a spinning handle in it. And I have a 22 caliber bore mop on the end. And I'm gonna soak this with some Bortex C4 carbon cleaner. So I'm gonna put a, a little rag here over my stock just to make sure I don't drip a whole bunch of stuff all over my stock. Because as I apply, apply the cleaner here, it's probably going to drip a little bit. So here's my C4. And we're going to very carefully put a couple drops all along this, uh, this mop here to soak it. I'm actually going to do both sides because this thing does take quite a bit to get it wet. And I don't use a bore guide for this step because I'm not pushing all the way through the bore and I want to be able to see exactly when I'm in that chamber. So this rod is going to go in very carefully and just sit in the chamber just like that. And that's it. So right now I'm going to let this thing sit here um, and let it soak. I want to let it soak a minimum of about 10 minutes. Uh, this stuff is actually safe enough. You can let it soak for an hour, or a couple hours. Um, it, no, nothing's going to happen to your barrel. You're not going to etch your, your, your metal like if you're using a, a harsh copper solvent. So we'll set this aside. One note here, what I did, because I, I know my, my geometry of my handle here, is when I put my cheek piece all the way down, uh, my, bore, my uh, rod handle is supported by the cheek piece. We don't want that thing flopping around because then you're gonna start bending your, your stuff inside the chamber and that's just not good. So we're gonna let this sit here for just a minute and then I'm gonna attend to some other matters. So I can take my rag because I've only got one with me today. Next thing I'm gonna do is start working on just some other dirty parts of my rifle, mainly the bolt. After a hard day on the range, uh, the bolt will usually end up uh, a little bit gummed up. Uh, usually has a lot of dust and, and debris and everything that's uh, blown in all day at the range. So we're quite frankly just going to go through and wipe everything off. Uh, give her a good once over. Make sure there's any, uh, make sure there's no uh, loose dust or chunks of lead or any weird things like that in there. And go ahead and kind of clean her up. Give her a good wipe down. And I actually, on the Gen 2s and the 360s, will disassemble my bolt uh, when I do this. Uh, so disassembly on the bolt, we do have a video that covers that. Uh, you can take a look there on our website. So I take, the, uh, I take the bolt in my left hand. I'm holding the bolt body with the bolt handle facing me. The bolt nose is to my left, and I'm not holding onto this because I want to allow it to spin freely. And this takes a little bit of hand strength, so I usually grab a rag here to help me. And I grab the bolt shroud and twist away, and therefore the fire control will come right out. We'll set that aside here for a minute, and then we can just twist that bolt nose till it comes apart. So I'm going to first pay attention to the bolt nose. We'll go here and kind of wipe a little excess lubricant off of here, uh, get any loose crud out of there, um, and then we'll pay attention to some other things here in just a minute. Okay, so I take my, my bolt nose, set everything aside. We're going to pay attention to this first. I'm going to grab a Q-tip, come in here again, wipe out the excess lube, uh, any dust, anything like that. A very vital place to clean 
is right up here inside the flat portion of the bolt nose. That's where the firing pin will come up and, and hit. And that is one place with the Voodoo. If you get any uh, debris, any big chunks of dust or sand or anything in there, um, it's going to prevent the firing pin from going all the way forward. You'll end up with some misfire issues. So I always want to make sure that area is nice and clean. Uh, wipe out in through here. And the next most important thing we're going to look at is up here under the extractors, right? We want to make sure those things are moving freely. Usually, especially if you're shooting suppressed, you'll end up with a lot of loose crud built up around the extractors. So I'm going to take my toothbrush here and go through and do some basic brushing underneath, around, on top, um, go through all of them there. Uh, if you have uh, some spray gun scrubber or a shot of compressed air, I stress wear eye protection if you're going to use it. Uh, but you can go ahead and hold the extractors open and give a little shot of, of gun scrubber in there or compressed air to blow out any loose stuff. Uh, again, we want to make sure those extractors are, are uh, clear and free and able to grab onto the round with no, no issues there. So these feel pretty good. I'm giving them a little feel with my fingers as they go here. A little bit more stuff under this one. Clean her out. And I'm going to take the face of that Q-tip and just kind of come right up along here in the little recess uh, where the case head would sit when you chamber your round. And make sure that's free of loose stuff as well. So we're looking good. We'll set that aside here for a minute. Go through on the bolt body itself. Again, same thing. Wipe off all the excess stuff on the outside. Built up old grease, oil, whatever you're using. Uh, clean up around here on the back. Grab another Q-tip. Go through here and clean the lugs out. Cool. All right, next step is fire control. Don't really need to take this all the way apart, but uh, again, old oil, old grease, because we're gonna replace it here when we're all done. Give everything a good wipe. Take a look at the tip of your firing pin. Make sure it's in good shape. Make sure everything's aligned. So we always want to make sure that the flat portion of the firing pin is aligned with the, the rear cocking piece. If it's not, you can loosen the little set screw and just make sure it's clocked right. Tighten her back up. So this one looks good to go. So next step is let's put this thing back together. As I put this back together, I'm going to go ahead and lubricate it too. So a little bit of Lucas oil, gun oil. Uh, I like the little needle adapter on this because it keeps my, my control a little better as far as how much I put down. I'm going to run one bead all the way down, and that's it. So go ahead and wipe the excess around my fingers, get a little bit around here, around the lugs, and a little bit on the face here as well, that this is going to mate up against the back of the bolt body. All right, now take the bolt nose. Same thing in this area here that's going to sit into the bolt body. We want to make sure that's nicely lubricated all the way around. So you just want a light film on here. You don't want it to be super thick. It doesn't take much, uh, just enough so it's shiny. All right, put the bolt, bolt together. Set that there. Bolt together. We put this together until it lines up. Bolt nose and bolt body. This in my left hand. This in my right, we're going to slip this into the bolt assembly and we're going to line everything up. You can follow our video that's on the website. So be very careful not to bend the firing pin. The firing pin goes through the tip in the bolt nose and the bolt shroud is starting to slip in. Again, this takes a little bit of hand strength and oil doesn't help. So left hand holding my bolt handle, right hand, I'm going to push in, come back towards me just till it stops. We do not want to go all the way down into the caulking groove here on the bolt body itself. So that bolt is back together and ready to go. Um, we'll cover lubricating the outside when we get to finishing the rifle up. So next thing I'm going to do that's very important to take care of is make sure your muzzle is clean. Uh, a lot of people neglect this. We've had a couple rifles come into the shop for us to look at a few things and some accuracy complaints. And we look at the muzzle and it's absolutely covered in crud and it looks horrible. So we've already safety checked our rifle. Uh, we know it's empty. Matter of fact, it has something plugged in the chamber. So we're safe here. So let's take our muzzle cap off. Make sure we don't drop it. 
take my clean rag and we're going to kind of come through here and just get all the loose stuff out. Usually this stuff is real loose. It shouldn't take much scrubbing whatsoever. And the crown itself is looking good. I'm going to take my toothbrush just carefully through the threads. Threads are looking good. I want to inspect the face of the shoulder here too, make sure there's no dings or anything in there as well. Take a good look at my crown, make sure there's no dings in it. Also want to take a look at my thread cap as well. Make sure there's nothing loose in it, make sure there's no dings or burrs or anything that's going to damage the, the muzzle when I put it back in. And we can actually take a little Q-tip here, run her through to clean those threads out as well. And... Again, usually this does not take any hard scrubbing as long as you do it on a routine basis. So we can screw this back on very carefully, make sure you don't cross thread it. And we just want that to be snug on there. So that's pretty well good to go for, for here on out. Uh, while I've got the opportunity, while things are soaking, I'm going to go through the rest of the rifle. Um, Look at my scope, make sure uh, uh, all the dust is off of it. A lot of these matches we go to, we have a lot of blowing dust. Your rifle may be sitting on the ground as people are walking by and they're kicking things up. So um, we'll go through and just get all the dust out, all the little nooks and crannies, uh, especially my turrets. Uh, these are locking turrets, so they pull up and slip down. So I want to unlock them and take a look and make sure there's nothing stuck underneath them and make sure they, they move freely, and they do. Same thing with my parallax knob as well. Make sure nothing's binding, all in good shape. And we'll give our barrel a once over. Cool, and we'll give this a final touch up before we uh, put her away. So, all right, so that does, does it for the exterior. Now that this has had a chance to soak for a bit, we're going to remove the mop here and if you have a, a stubborn carbon ring, what you can do um, is actually use a brush. Uh, for this, we use a nylon, I stress nylon, don't use a bronze brush for this, but a nylon 22 caliber brush. And for this, I'm actually going to remove my cheek piece to get this out of the way and make sure I don't bang my knuckles on it. So again, I don't use a bore guide for this portion because I'm not going all the way through my barrel and I want to be able to see what's going on here. So I'm going to stick this in my chamber. It is just in the chamber portion. So it's in maybe about that far and I'm going to actually rotate it. This is where my rod that I have that doesn't have a, a spinning handle comes in handy. So we're rotating uh, so what we've done is we've soaked the carbon ring in the c4 carbon cleaner that starts to loosen up that uh, um, that carbon ring and softens it up now we're doing our best to scrub it away here that should be plenty we'll go ahead and pull this back out now we're going to go ahead and use bore guide for this portion so uh, this is our, our uh, V22 bore guide. These are made for us by Bortec. Um, great folks to deal with. So this one is set up for the Voodoo 360. Uh, the screw is in the lower hole. Since it's a right-handed rifle, it's in the lower hole on the left side of the gun. So this rod is going to pop in here. We hold the bolt stop open. And we want to make sure the bore guide goes all the way up against the face of the barrel. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use our rod. So this is a 36 inch uh, Bortec 22 rimfire rod. Um, I actually like them a little bit longer, but I won this one at a match. So uh, beggars can't be choosers, um, but it works very well. Thank you Bortec for the support of our matches. Um, so again, 36, cal or 36 inch 22 caliber bore guide. And this is a 22 rimfire specific Bortec Jag. So we're gonna take this thing I usually will set it here on the floor next to me so I can pop a patch over here onto the spear. Now for this portion, uh, my method here is I actually take a couple drops of the C4 on the first patch and we'll apply it 
and this will kind of help lubricate it so it can get through the bore without any issues and it also makes it a little more tactile if you will because what i'm also going to do here is i want to pick up any of the loose crud out of the bore what this is going to do is we're cleaning the chamber the Bortex c4 will clean the carbon out of the chamber but it will not attack all the lead and the the bullet lube buildup in the rifling um, think of it as good bacteria bad bacteria we have good fouling which we want in the rifling bad fouling which we don't want in the bore and that's where this uh, c4 cleaner really comes in handy so we're going to carefully insert the rod here go through it's in the bore there and then we want to make sure we push nice and straight just till it comes out the end there we go this right here is why i would usually want to run a slightly longer um, uh, bore rod or, or bore tech rod because you end up banging your knuckles up on the back of the stock so on this end we see my uh, patch just came through and what we're going to do is pull the patch off and I can already feel there's just some loose stuff that came out with it. The other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove my jag. And the reason why I'm carefully removing the jag is I do not want to risk any of these hard edges dragging across the crown of my muzzle. So if we ding that muzzle, that's the last thing that bullet sees before it heads down range. So we want to make sure we don't have any damage there. So we'll set that here for a minute. Carefully pull the rod back out. And I'm just gonna run maybe another two or three patches through. Another tip, take your rag and go ahead and wipe your rod down. Because if you had any loose crud that uh, fell off the inside of the bore, it's gonna attach to your rod. We wanna make sure you get that off. Let's put my jag back on. Now the rest of the patches I'm gonna run through are dry. And this is just to remove the loose stuff that we just scrubbed away from the bore. Um, and that's it. Just till we pop out. Remove that. One more should do it. Awesome. So we set our rod aside. We can pull our bore guide out. Now, one other thing too, the inside of your action. Uh, I noticed in a lot of these matches, it does get uh, really full of dust. So you can take a toothbrush. Uh, you really don't need much in the way of cleaner in there. And go through and give everything a good scrub. It should be pretty loose in there. It shouldn't be too much that's hard to get out. It's small and get up there a little further. Clean around the ejector. Now, um, the other thing we can do is we can take a Q-tip and come in here up around the breech face and go ahead and wipe all the excess stuff out. Being very careful not to push anything into the bore itself as you're in here. So you can see how much dirt and grime I got out from the match yesterday. That's quite a bit. All right. Now, she's pretty well ready to lubricate and put back in. So I've got my bolt here that's already pretty clean. I'm going to take my Lucas Oil Gun Oil, and this is my method of lubrication. Everybody kind of has their own things, but this is about the way I found my booties like to run. I take gun oil, I run one bead all the way down my bolt, and I take my fingers and go ahead and smear it all around and get this thing pretty wet. Get the excess off my fingers. So what we're going to do is go ahead and stick that in our gun and I'm going to kind of go through here and, and run it back and forth a little bit to move some around inside the bore and smear it around. And I'm going to take the bolt back out and there's a little too much on here yet but I did that just to make sure it was evenly applied inside the receiver. 
And what I usually do is just take the web of my thumb and forefinger and kind of wipe the excess off. And again, my bolt should be shiny, but you don't want to have gooped on lubricant, if you will, uh, just to the point where it's just got a nice thin film of oil. And that's pretty much it. Put her back in, and there she is. She's ready to go.